Hi, it's Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style, and I'm here with Jill Chibbers from 16 Style Types and Shop Your Wardrobe, and who also, of course, has, you know, done many a chat with me here to talk about various aspects of style. And Jill was actually telling me the other day that she had been doing some upcycling of denim. And I think, you know, I was like, oh, share some photos. And she shared some photos. Okay, can we chat about this? Um, Because I think there's some really interesting things here that we could all learn or get you some inspiration and ideas for maybe your own upcycling projects. Because often it's, we go, oh, I'd like to do something with it. Like, you know, maybe it's a little bit old fashioned or maybe there's something about it. You go, it's just not really working, but I don't want it to go into landfill. Um, and, but I haven't got any ideas exactly of how I could do it. So I've put together some images that I will be sharing and, um, so that Jill and I can talk through, uh, all her ideas. Yeah. Upcycling denim, it has been a really fun process and the projects we're about to show you, there's six of them represent, uh, a, a portion of the projects that I've done. Uh, they're all uh, a bit of a piece in a way. I don't consider myself to be artistic as such, but I have learned that I actually am quite creative. And that's been quite a journey in and of itself to recognise that and embrace that and say that about myself. And I see these projects as an expression of my form of creativity. And, of course, we're all creative in different ways, and this is part of the fun uh, and also the self-care of acknowledging who you are is recognizing the way you do things. And just because somebody else does creative in one way and you don't doesn't mean you're not creative. And so this to me represents um, something creative. And it's also so very practical, practical because it's it's wearable. Um, so I don't really do anything abstract. <laughs> it's all very concrete and tangible. Yes. And it's in some ways, it's a bit of fashion as therapy here too. It's like there is that creative process. And I really do think, you know, whatever your personality, that that we can all gain something from doing some creative act um, in some yeah. way or other. And um, Yeah, and- definitely. One of these projects in particular, I was going through a very stressful time. My, my parents are aging and fragile and it's really been extraordinarily difficult for our entire family and so one of these projects I I did as a bit of therapy um so but I I really started by denim upcycling with this project here um and I'd seen something on Etsy I'd seen a store that did these exact kinds of skirts and I thought and they were selling for between two and three hundred dollars a few over three hundred dollars and now that I've done quite a few of these, I actually think that's quite a reasonable price given how much time that goes into them. But I thought, hey, I've got a sewing machine. Hey, I'm actually quite good at sort of pulling apart and putting together some things like don't hand me a computer or a clock or anything mechanical. But things like this, I thought I could probably work out how to do that. And uh, so this was my very first foray. So I I had the Levi's, which I'd bought um, in a recycling centre for $2. These are the cheapest jeans I ever bought, (laughs) these Levi's, two bucks. Um, And then I had the uh, other pair of jeans that is the front and back panel, uh, also pre-loved. And they were really too tight around the waist, which I've had a problem my whole life, not really having a waist, but since menopause, it's, it's, it's gone even further away. That waste of mine. So I thought, you know, I could I could have a whack at, at doing this. And I actually didn't do any uh, YouTube tutorials on this. I really just sort of went, I wonder if da, 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 what if I cut this and if I cut that? And I sort of worked out how to do it. Um, and so um, this is a really easy project that if you were interested in doing something like this, you could do. So, you know, the first thing is to turn the, the jeans that are going to be the body of the skirt into a skirt and you do that by starting at one ankle and cutting all the way up through the crutch and down to the other ankle and so you release the garment from being a pair of trousers into being a skirt that has no front or back panel Um, and then it becomes what will I do with those those two godot shaped those two triangular um, shaped spaces 
Now, I've used denim and I think denim works really well, but you could actually use any fabric that you liked, um, you know, either a plain colour or something with a pattern or something that had meaning to you if you wanted to. So then what I did with the panel jeans, the first thing I did was I cut them off just below the crutch. So then I had two cylindrical pieces of fabric and then I also slit them up the seam. Now, here's the little tip. Treat your panel pieces as fabric. And that was really important. So I gave them a bit of an iron and then you can see that I used, that's the inside seam that you can use. Um, that's an important thing before you cut your cylinders is to have a look at the seam on the outside of the leg and on the inside of the leg and decide which one you want to be in the middle of your panel. And I wanted the, over, the top stitched um, bit, which happened to be the inside seam. Sometimes it's the outside seam or sometimes it's both and you just have to look at it and and have a sense of which one you like. Because once you've cut it, um, you make your life very difficult if you want to put it back together again. Unless you want to do something patchy, which you, yeah. you might want to do. Yeah. So tell me, and, what shape of jeans? So what kind of leg shape? Because I feel like the, the jeans you've cut up that have turned into the kind of god they are not a skinny jean, are they? No, they were boots. They were, uh, 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 well, actually, I'd, I'd call them wide, but they were designated as a boot. They were a pair of jag boot um, cut jeans. But that's a really good point because when we look at another project, I actually used a pair of skinny jeans and that skirt is is pencil. Uh, yes. It's not even A. And this this is quite an A. I wanted to have a bit of a mermaid kind of look to it. Yes. So I wanted it to have that sense of fullness ar around the bottom circumference. But, of course, if you wanted to make a long skirt um, much straighter, you know, sort of the geisha style of skirt, then you would just make your inside panels much smaller. So rather than that triangle being like that, you would make the triangle like that. And the you, jeans themselves were straight. Yeah. So you could also think about that if you wanted an even more kind of mermaidy flippy bottom to go for a flared bottom because that's going to give you a bit more shape through there as well. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things you could do there is you could actually cut up the bottom seam uh, in the back and, and do another goddo insert. So you've got your first panel and then you could actually put another goddo in yeah. to give it even even more of, of that sense of pull. Keeping in mind these are non-stretch heavy cotton, um, so there's not a lot of that sense of movement. So when we get to the really creative skirt, you'll see how I got around that, the, the design. <laughs> I sound so lofty. The design decision that I made yeah. um, to to make the denim have a bit more movement. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's not a lot of movement with non-stretch heavy denim. Yeah. Well, I'm expecting to see the, a new version with a leopard print insert in it. Jill? Well, I, I have thought about that. And, and another version that I have done is just to cut the skirt off and and I I purchased a skirt, again, op shop, that I just I just stuck them together. Yes. So I Frank, Frankensteined a skirt together. But putting this um, panel in does require a bit of skill because one of the things that you have to do on both the front and the back of the jeans is you have to slit up um, further um, and cross those pieces of fabric over. Mm. Um, so I've done that on both the front and the back. So there is a, just a little bit of fiddling around to, to make that happen um, because you, you've just got big heaps of sort of fabric that's sort of, you know, flopping around because of the nature of, well, let's not put too fine a point on it, but when you look at a pair of jeans going from waist through to waist, that yeah. bit in the middle, that fabric is excess yeah. in a skirt. It's good. So you've yes. got to do something with it. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. So the next. And then just, just on that, I'm oh, sorry, um, just to finish, I frayed around um, the panel and I frayed around the bottom. And that's the reason why I did that is because precise sewing is not my natural ability. I didn't want to turn it under or do anything where it's going to be a nice, neat thing. I wanted to have license for it to be a little bit, not exactly rough, but um, I didn't want it to be precise. And so, I mean, we can talk about fraying. It's a whole section in and yeah. of itself when it comes to denim upcycling, but that's how I finished um, both my panels and around the bottom. And voila, done. Yeah. So the, the next one is not this actual pair of jeans, but you have this pair of jeans and then you are gifted the same pair. So you don't yeah. need two of the same. So you decided to turn it into this skirt. 
Yeah, well, I originally had the idea to turn it into a pair of shorts and then I thought, what a waste of knee to ankle. These were skinny ankle length mm. jeans. And my mother and I had both bought the same pair of jeans many years ago now and they were quite expensive design some european designer brand gorgeous you know a really lovely almost sateen denim you mm. know so uh really lovely so i thought okay well i know how to do the skirt thing because i'd done the, the previous one and i had from knee to ankle as fabric um and it also had a little um uh, split at the bottom on the outside of the jeans and so I thought I could use that on the front. So I actually, the, the, I, I did that. I cut the skirt off and then I, I'm pointing at the screen, but you can't see. There's a, a much smaller, and I'm seriously talking probably maybe 15 centimetres. Yeah, 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 exactly. You maybe can 15 see it centimeters. just here as well. Yeah. So I stuck that in and then I put it on and it was short. I, I don't like to show above my knees because I actually don't like that part of my legs particularly well. I feel that they're a little bit chunky and it's just not a length. I like to finish skirts or shorts on. So I thought, oh, I need to make this longer. And rather than just make it longer by sticking some fabric on it, I actually made a ruffle. So you can see that there's a ruffle there. So the I had to piece together what I had. Um, and so that ruffle is probably made out of <laughs> six different bits of fabric. Um, and then I, I I sewed it right sides together and turned it back and top yeah. stitched around it. But yeah. you could have just sewn it straight into the top and had the frayed look on the top because I just did a zigzag around the bottom yeah. um, and just left it to fray on the uh -huh. bottom. And then I just did a little bit more top stitching here and there. And now I got this fantastic little skirt um, that is in this gorgeous leopard print. Um, the print itself is lovely and the fabric is is lovely. Um, that took a little bit of extra time because I made it too short. You could certainly cut the time down doing it if you made it the correct length the first time. But, you know, then I think that the ruffle actually adds something to it. It actually adds and it's, and it's often in that the little additions it's a bit like adding an accessory isn't it it's that adding something extra takes it from being kind of plain and boring and turns it into something much more exciting yeah yeah and again with those little panels uh i wanted to use the split in the ankle but you can do anything you like with that if you're using the same fabric you can turn it on an angle so that your side seam cuts across mm. um, that panel. Um, you know, you could create a little patchwork. You can do all kinds of things with the fabric. And this is a, this making this skirt um, is a really great way for turning any jeans, um, and these were skinny, um, mm -hmm. into a skirt if, you, if you're done with the jeans. Yeah. Um, so this, this was actually pretty straightforward. If you've got, if you can sew in a straight line, this is pretty straightforward. Well, that's good. Now, here we're starting to get a little bit more complex, aren't we, Jill? Yes, yes, we are. So Two pairs of jeans. Yes, it is. So the, the top part is an actual um, pencil skirt um, from a, a lovely brand here in Australia called The Works. Um, and it just felt too officey. Um, it just felt sort of too formal and whilst I liked it and I, I liked how it looked on me I found myself when putting on a denim skirt just feeling like you know I needed to have a, a notebook and a pair of glasses and a walking in to take shorthand you know and so I thought well I could you know fiddle around with this so I got two pairs of jeans uh one they're, they're very similar in color obviously and that was I wanted this to all have the same general color so I took the skirt with me when I went op shopping yep. and as it turned out, the major pair of jeans I got were enormous. And I mean enormous, like a size 52. Like I could have fit into it twice. They, I don't know where they came from. Um, and that that was really good because it gave me a lot of fabric. And then the other pair I just chose because the colour worked. Um, so the first bit um, forms the, the the top bit of the skirt that you can see, which has, has a, that sort of slightly mermaidy kind of shape and to be honest I wasn't 100% thrilled with it but you can see that there's the inside seam running across it yeah um yeah and it was an odd length 
it wasn't midi, it wasn't long. And so I bought the other pair of jeans, not knowing what I was going to do. And I turned it into um, a flounce, a flounce as opposed to a ruffle. Um, so they're not the same thing. And so I put a, I attached the flounce to the, to the skirt underneath it. So it sort of sits, sits underneath it. And so when basically you, attached to the, the hem of the original skirt. Yeah, yeah. So I, I lowered the hem of the skirt and ironed it out and sewed that directly onto it. And even then, you know, it's still not quite long, but I, I let it fray. And then I used the offcuts from those jeans, uh, the pockets and other bits and pieces to make the circles. Yeah. Um, so you can see one circle on the, the left lower hip yeah. and then there's three on the skirt at the back. And, again, I just, I mean, I just used a, a little bowl that I've got yeah. and I just <laughs> – placed it on various odd parts of the jeans that had interesting. So one of them is the is the watch pocket, uh, you know, um, normally in the top right, and one's a portion of the back, uh, back, uh, yeah. back pocket and one just has a seam on it. Just to add a little bit of interest and also to tie that bottom flounce to the the other bit of fabric so yeah. it had a relationship to it. So that was from, they were from the flounce, bottom flounce jeans. They were from the bottom flounce jeans. So that's another thing is to scavenge as much as you can from each piece and and just don't be too limited in what possibilities yeah. um, there might be um, and don't throw things out too soon uh, because you might think, oh, I, it would be really great if I whatever and if you've thrown it out, then you'll, you'll have, you know, if you walk your legs off trying to get something, yeah. that'll be exactly the same. Um, so that would it's be another thing I'd say. I've been watching um, the Great British Sewing Bee on on television, and you know, one show of their, I know I love it so much. One of their challenges is always to turn, you know, like take something and turn. But they're always saying use the pieces. So if it's got a zip in it, how can you use that zip in whatever you're creating? Or if it's got some sort of feature, how can you use that feature? And I, it, it feels very Great British Sewing Bee here to me, Jill. That I'm sure that. <laughs> I'd love it. <laughs> well, look, I might do okay on the transformation challenge, yeah. but the pack challenge and the major measure, no way. Like, let's make a tartan skirt, like a kilt. No, no, I can't make a kilt. Kilt me out. Okay. So this is actually the bolero that I'm wearing today. Yeah. And look, unbelievably I get my inspiration from honestly the strangest sources I was watching a documentary on Netflix and one of the people being interviewed was flipping through old photographs so we're seeing this on screen and in one of them she's wearing a bolero um, denim jacket and I thought oh never, I've seen cropped denim jackets but I've never seen a bolero eyes one which to me is that curve yeah. and I thought that's interesting and I actually had this denim jacket in my giveaway bag I just it wasn't working for me I it, I like my denim to be able to be buttoned up although I never do I always felt it was just a little too tight and I, I just this jacket it was an op shop fine and I was just that nah, not working for me it also had the designer who is the sister of one of Australia's most prolific songstresses um on the buttons and I didn't like it and it, anyway it wasn't working for me I thought ah, I will bolero I this jacket so um I got a bolero that I have um that's in some of the photos a leopard print one that's nice beautiful satin one and I um fed the arms of this jacket through it and lined it all up and just got my pen out and just made sure I was all lined up and I just drew around where the bolero was did a little bit of measuring on the back so I wasn't way out I don't do precise I do precise in lots of things but I don't do like so as long as it's basically 14 centimeters that's okay um, and then I just cut it out. Uh, I cut the sleeves off and I cut around. The collar was not quite, it was always a weird length when turned over. So I thought if I cut it off, then it'll make it Mandarin or Grandpa or whatever that this collar's yeah. called. Yeah. And then I just, uh, I frayed it. Now I'm do you have a whole fray. fraying? Yeah. How, what's your process of fraying? Well, there's four ways you can fray. First, well, first thing you have to decide is whether you're going to do a keeper stitch so that your fraying doesn't end up Both fraying right. forever. Yeah. I like to do a keeper stitch. So there's a keeper stitch yeah. around here and around the whole whole Same. thing and, and around here. And I always like to do it in something that coordinates so it disappears. You can't see it. 
that's probably the first thing. So the first way you can fray is stick it in the washing machine and let it wash. That will give you the most raggedy look, uh, really uneven, and you'll get weft end, um, whatever the other warp, warp uh, thread. Um, so that's the first way. The longest way you can fray is by using your quick unpick or your seam ripper like this and sit there and go like this, and that will give you the neatest look and Honestly, just pick a series on Netflix because it will take a long time to do it. <laughs> the two middle ways, the two middle ways, get a pair of scissors and snip about half a centimetre, dip, uh, you know, distances yeah. and then just pull up, pull it apart by hand. That's the, that, and that's, that will, that's reasonably quick. The absolute quickest way, get a steel brush. Now this one here, it is very sharp like this. I, the, the, um, what are these things called? Head? The, no, the actual the bristles. The bristles. They have a bit of give. Yeah. Um, and that that really works. You could use a pet brush, but those bristles don't have any give. Um, so you can see that this has a few threads in it because I've done <laughs> a white a bit of, and that is actually the quickest way. And that's also where your keeper thread comes in place. Yeah. So what you do is you just you just put it against the edge. So you put yeah. your, your seam like this and you just go. Brush down. Sh yeah. And that is the absolute quickest way to fray. Okay. There we but go. It's not, as, it's not as precise and it won't go all the way up to your keeper line. You want to go all the way up to your keeper line, which will give you a little bit of a flouncy look. You need to use your quick unpick or your seam ripper and go all the way up to that line. But prepare to spend some time. Mm. So yeah. now this one, six pairs of jeans and a lot of work by the look of it. Yeah, this took the longest. This is my therapy skirt. This is my art therapy, my fashion therapy, my upcycling therapy uh, skirt. Um, so the top of the skirt is a pair of acid washed jeans, not designer target, I think they were. Um, and then the uh, main body of the jeans is a pair of Levi's that are about size 40, which I do not take. And I'd actually purchased those because I wanted the patch, the denim patch you can see on my left hip there, and I wanted the inside patch that says this is an original pair of Levi's from the inside pocket. Mm -hmm. Why did I want those? I can't remember why I wanted them. So I found them in an op shop for like five bucks and I was going to throw out the jeans. And then I got this idea to do these and I was really glad I had the bigger pair of jeans because it gave me more fabric in the legs so the first thing I did was I cut them across at the crutch so then um I had uh, and I actually cut it a little bit lower so I had a continuous piece of did I have a yeah I had a continuous piece of fabric that that I could sew that was the first thing that I did was sew those um big size 40 Levi's yep. to the acid print top and and it um, it really gave it a really nice sense of, of shape. And, and I spent quite a bit of time on that, making sure the crossover um, gave me room to walk. But this has more of a slightly geisha. It's not A-line. It's a straight skirt. Um, and so I really liked that silhouette. And because I cut the seam so that it had the double top stitching, it, it gives it that nice, I like it, even yeah. though I let it fray, gave it that nice look. And then I started... Um, pilfering all the bits off these jeans um so i unpicked the pockets it's very tempting just to cut around the pockets particularly red tab jeans yeah i pulled those pockets off off the top yeah uh yes and okay. i wanted that look yeah but it's very tempting with levi's or things with the tab to just cut around them i find a better look is if you actually unpick it take off the red tab then you have to sew it all back together i, I personally prefer that look some people like it because they fray around the fabric yeah. And so I've used almost every bit of those jeans. You can see on the right, picture on the right, there's um, a bit from the waistband with the watch pocket in it. You'll see on the, the left thigh, picture on the, the left, that um, I've cut out the whole section that goes from the waist down to the bottom of the pocket. There's other bits and pieces. of, of oh, On the front there, you'll see I've used where the button, um, so just above the flounce at the bottom, uh, yep, exactly. That's the button. So I, I used the button and on the back I've used a bunch of other things. And then I used three other, so that's two, no, I used four other pair of jeans um, for all these various odd patches. So I've got circles, stars, clouds and lightning bolts 
and um, I unpicked pockets. So, so one of the pairs of jeans is just, I just use one pocket and it's on the top right. You can see it there. And the other pocket went on the back of this. Yeah. Um, so, so even though I said six pairs of jeans, I only use one pocket from one pair of jeans. Um, and then I, again, I just, I used my bits of fabric, um, my bits of jeans as fabric. Um, and again, just looking at various odd, you know, where, how do I like this? You'll see in the back panel of this one that, yeah, um, I used uh, the other pair of the, I think there's, I can't remember if they were the size 40s or another pair, yeah. but I wanted that back panel to have something interesting in it so that has a portion of the pocket in it. Um, and then I knew I wanted to do a flounce on this. So a flounce is different to a ruffle. So a ruffle is a rectangle and you ruffle it along the top where you sew it to. A flounce is a donut. So I just have a really big platter. This is how I do my ruffles. A really big platter and then a teacup. And um, that's how I make them. So uh, I didn't have enough to fabric for the flounce yeah. to do all that. So I had to join all of that together to make to make them, but I only needed three. Yeah. Um, so the flounce has joins all through it. Um, and then I just, I didn't do what I did on the leopard skirt, which was turn it, you know, yeah. uh, right sides facing. I just sewed it on so that I got that extra bit of fraying along the top. And when I walk, um it the, the flounce actually flounces flounces up and it, yeah. it feels really fun and unbelievably it actually feels very feminine I feel for yeah. me my version of feminine yeah. when I when I wear it and then that nice split gives me um which you can see in that picture there that gives it makes it very very wearable to yeah. walk in um like and that's just but, two legs so you've just used the seams of the legs to be so you haven't had to do anything fancy no, and because this was a skirt, it went on and off the machine relatively easily. Although I did have to be very, very careful that you know I didn't sew the front to the back or anything like that. So I did have to concentrate while I was I was uh, doing this. But this was all done on the machine. Okay. Yeah, and I just used um, just denim. There's you can buy thread um, that's denim coloured. So I just. So I didn't have to keep changing, you know, I, I didn't do any top stitching or anything yeah. like that in the oranges and yellows that a lot of top stitching is. So yeah. I'm very, very happy um, with my therapy skirt. <laughs> <laughs> so now these are quite amazing and, mm. again, a lot of work, I'm thinking. You know, but no, the most work. work. Yeah. yeah, these took the most work of, of everything. Um, so these started as just a plain pair of um, op shop jeans, okay. five bucks. Yeah, there, uh, they, yeah, are. there they are. Yes, with my little helper, um, checking them out. And they were a bit frayed around the, the, the pocket watch and around the bottom, which I really liked. They, I really liked the fit on me. I really liked that they were um, uh, short. They were yeah, um, cropped. Ankle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I got to keep the original hem. I wanted, I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'd seen online, there's a variety of people who sell these kinds of jeans with stuff stuck all over yeah. them. And again, for 200 through to 600. And now that I've done a pair, I think that's dirt cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you can find a pair of jeans and somebody has done this, 200 bucks, and you don't want to do it, in my yeah. opinion, that How is many really. Hours? How many hours? Yeah. Uh, I couldn't even count. It took me days. I, I didn't do it full time, but I did it over a series of days. Now, what you see are some, so what I did was I took all my leftover fabric, which I had a bunch of leopard print and uh, Australian Indigenous prints that I'd gotten from Spotlight. And then I had some botanical prints and I had some, these are a pair of Levi's. And then I had some offcuts. So um, what you just had your thing on there is a pair of um, just, pants with a leopard print packet uh, pocket on it mm -hmm. I had some buttons and, and then I had some um appliques some embroidery patches that I got all from Etsy uh I did not expect that one um uh one you were just there the, that leopard to be so enormous no. <laughs> I mean it was clearly described with its dimensions but when it arrived it's like Wow, this is so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, so uh, the way I did this was I waited until I had everything. I had all my fabric 
um, ironed. And then I just sort of, I started playing around with my big rocks, with my big pieces, which was that one patch was one of the biggest one. And then just, I had bits and bits of leopard, you know, what do I want to do with them? What shapes do I want? You can see I've gone a bit boring with circles, rectangles, et cetera. But then I got a bit more creative. I did, you know, the number five and uh, I've stuck, you know, a, a bits of um, uh, ribbon on top of fabric. And and this was one of those, the jeans are telling me what to do. Kind of, I know that sounds a little bit like, wow, your jeans are talking to you now. Have you, I don't know, thought about getting help? Um, but they really did you know, offer up options for what was going to work. Um, and so I left the smallest things. So you can see on the bottom left there, I've got two little leopard um, circle um, flowers with little mirrory things and the J and I've got a couple of small leopards, the buttons. I left all that till last. Um, so, yeah, and I did all of this with the exception of one patch on the machine, which any of you who sew will know just how difficult. This was where I ran the most danger of sewing the front to the back and the left leg to the right leg and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So it took a lot of concentration. Yeah, that one at the back, well, I had to give up my... my that one to be as sewing. big as it was? I did, actually, and I knew that was the only place that could go, and I knew I'd have to give up my pockets. Um, so, But I kept my pockets on the front. Both front pockets yeah. are fully functional, but I, I lost the use of the, the back pockets. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, but that was also one of my big rocks. Like I, tr I did have a look in various other places. It just didn't work anywhere else. It's an example of the project sort of tells you yeah. where things need to go. Like it just didn't work anywhere else, that enormous big leaping leopard. So it went across the back like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can see the kind of the full thing there and then there's another little leopard there. So that is the one you told me that you had to hand stitch on, but everything else yeah. is going on with the machine. Yeah, yeah. And the way that I did that is I, I had a little melamine plate, like a side plate, and I slid it up in between the jeans and I just sat there listening to some music and, and went around. And I did that so I didn't have to stick my hand inside the jeans or constantly be concerned. You know, all you need is one stitch that's gone all the way through and that's a fix you have to make. And um, I was pretty keen not to to do um, that. So that was the only thing that I did by hand. Everything else I did on the machine. And like that splodge you see on the top left, that's the top of a vase that I've got. Okay. So that's when I started to use some some different shapes. And, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then we've also got another little bolero jacket here. Uh, yeah. It's been dyed as well. Yeah. So I bought it on Etsy. It had been pre-dyed. Uh, again, it was one of those, it felt a little bit a little bit snug um, and I wasn't entirely thrilled with it. And I'd done this one and I thought, oh, lo and behold, why don't I do some more since I've added it? And uh, I've got a little bit of a process for it. So just I went through exactly the same process, just put my bolero jacket on top, fed the arms through it, lined it all up, got my pen out zoop, like that. And then I, I do a double check when I'm finished. I put them together to make sure things are right. I just cut off the sleeves. Um, and again, I did my keeper stitch and then I got out my fraying brush yes. and frayed and, and, um, then uh, the patch was stored. I'd already put the, the uh, patch on the, the left shoulder, and uh, there we there we are. I didn't do around the collar on, on yeah. that one. Yeah, well, so. thing, they don't all have to be the same, do they? No, no. And I think yeah. that's what's so great is that you can, like you know, play. You can put things on, and you can always do something, and then later on go, oh, I want to add some more to it, or yeah, you know. So you never yeah. you never stuck having done something in particular. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I think the overall thing is if this idea appeals to you, then just just have a bit of a play. I, I do suggest that you start with what I call low consequence items. So you don't want to be frightened that something either precious or expensive is going to be ruined because that there is the potential that it won't go to plan or the vision in your head won't be realised or you'll do something with the scissors or the machine that'll, you know, render it not great. Um, so starting with something that if it doesn't work out, you're not going to be heartbroken is a, is a really nice way to sort of ease into it. 
Um, and the other thing I'd say is you do need to have a bit of courage. Just <laughs> holding those scissors in your hand and it's like, I'm about to cut into this thing and there's no turning back. That can take a bit of courage. So have yeah. that courage and do it. Yes. And so now, I mean, I think some of the things that would be really useful is that the fact is like you don't have to just buy jeans in your size. Like that's, yeah. something, you know, you might not think about that when you're in the, you know, the op shop or the thrift store, whatever you want to call it. But that's yeah. such a useful thing to go with. Like if you're just looking for a particular colour to get features and details off, it could be a way smaller size than you normally wear. But if you want more fabric, then go for a much larger size and that's going to give you more fabric. Yeah. So two thoughts there. One, look in the men's section. Always look in the men's jeans section because sometimes you can actually find women's jeans there that have been mis, mis you know, uh, categorised. Or, yeah, miscategorized. Or if they're Levi's, honestly, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, so that's one thing. And the other thing is look in the kids section because sometimes they have really fun prints in uh, lovely fabrics. And because of the nature of kids op shopping, the quality is often really um, high because they, ha they haven't been worn so much. Um, so so don't just limit yeah. yourself to the women's section if you are doing an op shop. Um, you know, look, of course you can go to a fabric store or buy online. That option's always there. I like op shopping, particularly in Australia. We have such quality op shops. They're really nice shopping experiences. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. So that's, you know, just think about like, yeah, think outside the square when we're in the op shop, when we're looking, like you'll have to have one pair that fits you because you need the waist. But other than that, the rest of them do not have to fit you. So it's really going, the waist is the most important for the pair that's going to be the base piece. And then after that, it really doesn't matter. I would say if you're going to go like waist to knee, you want that to be a nice fit. I have adjusted from say hip to knee. I don't have, you know, very big hips. And I've, I've never been entirely happy with that. But, mm -hmm. of course, you can just do um, waist to top of hip. So yep. just a pretty short amount and then start from there. But don't cut across the zip. Yep. So, you know, the length of the zip is important. So so long as that component fits you, which truly could be 15 centimetres, yep. then you're good to go. Yeah. So where did you find your inspiration from? I said you one of them you were telling us about, you know, watching a television show. Where are the other places you source inspiration? Well, I love Etsy uh, and I really support what they do there, um, their general ethos with vintage and handmade, although, of course, things are creeping in that are neither of those. Um, so uh, just having a, a look around and having some favourite shops, um, uh, that, that's been a source of inspiration. Sometimes I just do a Google Images search as well. So I did a Google Images search on patchwork denim skirts, long patchwork denim skirts, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And sometimes you'll find skirts that are available for sale um, and they will just give you ideas. And the important thing about that is I never copy. I never go, I'm going to make that skirt. Yeah. Uh, but the idea of taking two pairs of jeans, you know, making one the body of the skirt and cutting in a go, I mean, to me, that's, you know, that's just an idea. Yeah. Um, that's probably been done, you know, many, many times before Etsy was even dreamed of. Um, so online I get I get a lot of things just from general images searches and, and sometimes it will be through a specific search on something like Etsy. Yeah. And look, the thing was, is, is it's very hard to make an exact copy anyway because the chances of you getting exactly those same things, like the right, the same shades of denim or the same styles or whatever it is, and you don't necessarily know what they've started with. You know, whether it was a skinny jean or a bootleg or a wide leg or what it might, you know, which are all going to change the shape of the garment in a way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you do do a skinny pair, just be aware you're going to have much less fabric. By the time you open that up, you're going to have much less um, than, you know, obviously. And I think a, if you are thinking about, I mean, just mixing stretchy denim with a, a non-stretchy denim is going to be much harder than mix stretch with stretch denim or less stretch with less stretch. You'll find it, the garment yeah. will move better with you. And also too is if you've got a stretch seam and a non-stretch, it can be a little bit tricky to sew too. That's a really good point as well. I didn't mix um, stretch with non-stretch and it actually never even occurred to me. But now that we're talking about it, um, I something must have been dinging in my brain about keeping them all um, the same. So the leopard skirt has got a little small amount of stretch in it, but that works because I didn't add in anything else yep. with it. So, we were only using yeah. that same fabric. So 
the same fabric and on fabric is easy. Um, yeah, yeah. Versus yeah. if when you're choosing, like if I've got five pairs of jeans, then I want to choose similar levels of stretch or non-stretch. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you can have a pocket that had stretch in it. That wouldn't matter so much if you're, you know, sewing that over the top. But you don't want, if you've got two major pieces that are kind of holding the garment together, you wouldn't want one to be super stretchy and the other one to be quite stiff. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and again, that's about when you're getting your component pieces. Have in the back of your mind a sense of, I'm actually buying fabric here. Yes, it's currently looking like a pair of jeans, but soon it's not. Soon yeah. it's just going to be scraps of denim all over my table. Yeah. Um, so that can be another helpful way of thinking about it. If I was in a fabric store, what kind of thing might I look to put together? Yeah. And you don't have to do, like, and this is where, like, the, you know, you've got the the jeans with the, the, the leopards and all that on them, that you could actually also think about mixing similar sorts of fabrics, but they aren't, don't, aren't necessarily the same. They don't all have to be denim on denim on denim. Like you could add in pockets from a garment that was not denim or, you know, like there's so many yeah. options. Yeah, there are. And, I mean, I just I started off with those pairs of jeans just with, you know, fairly, you know, basic shapes like rectangles, circles, yeah. it's, it's stars. Um, but do get creative. I mean, literally I was sitting there going, this feels a bit boring. And I looked at this vase that I've got with this yeah. wavy top and I thought, I could do a splodge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you could think about that. And also the, the letter five, yeah. um, that happens to be the number that my husband had on the back of his ice hockey jersey through his entire ice hockey career. Um, so, but I, I got a really nice five, mm -hmm. you know, I printed it on PowerPoint really big and yeah. cut it out and used it. So, you know, you want to think about that. I mean, you could do um, the letters of all yeah. your children if you want yeah. to. They're, they're anything. Yeah. Yeah words yeah. in whatever it is that you know floats your boat so yeah. but yeah all of those things you know if you have a thing yeah. um this is a really great opportunity for either doing that thing whether or not that's a color or it might be i know the eiffel tower or something yeah. french or words for example there's lots of fabric you can buy with words on it yeah what, whatever it is for you mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, that's the thing is I just went like when you were telling me about this, I'm like, oh, I'd love to see all this. And I know it is it is often that when you're going, oh, I want to do something, but I'm not sure what it is. It's great to see, you know, the process and to go, you know, you know yourself, you're not the world's best sewer. You'll. <laughs> I am. I can sew a straight line, but anything precise, like I wouldn't attempt to put in a zip. I would never attempt anything tattered like a blazer. Yeah. Uh, that is just not my, my skill set. And it, it takes all the joy out of it for mm. me. I feel so much pressure to have to get it right. And uh, these uh, component of them was not just the finished product, that sense of where we yeah. are, but that I enjoyed the process. So knowing what your skill set is and working within those abilities will give you the greatest sense of joy if you attempt anything like this. So I just didn't, I just didn't want to be mucking around with anything that was going to cause me real stress. Yeah. And look, you could even do something like the applique on the jeans. You could do, even if you don't have a sewing machine, that's something you could do that by hand where you, Absolutely. Could, you could choose to just get some appliques and you can go into Etsy and buy appliques if you didn't want to make them yourself. If you just want, I just want to start out small, go into yeah. Etsy, look up appliques. You'll be amazed at the um, range. The, the range there is. And then you can just start to, have fun with going oh and where can I put them and this is where you lay it out put them on you know think about you know front and back um all yeah. those sorts of things uh and just you know have a bit of fun with it yeah and also think about places you might not think about like uh the bottoms of jeans um that can be really nice I've got one that has a pineapple yeah. just at the very bottom um, think about the waistband on jeans. Think about the watch pocket, which, of course, is completely and utterly useless now. Uh, but that's a nice little spot for just a nice, simple, little one. So th those kinds of things can be yours. Just on the hip, that can be nice as well. So think about, you know, you, you really are only limited by your imagination and your willingness to give it a go. Yeah. So you can do as small as you like. They don't have to be like Jill's where it's top to toe. <laughs> it can be you know, just something like a little piece of personalization. And I think this is where it takes a garment when you do that personalization. It's like it can take a mass market, you know, mass produced 
garment and turn it into something more bespoke, more tailored. And, you know, you can express your personality through it. So, you know, Jill's got the leopard prints, um, but, you know, if you have a floral thing or a tartan thing or whatever it might be, that they yeah. are all things you could go, oh, I could just, and you could just put a little bit. So sometimes it's just, I could put a little bit of braid on it. I could put a little bit of something like just even down the side seam of the leg, you could put some sort of braid or something down there just to, you know, make it more interesting. If you don't want to go the full, you know, <laughs> the full front, back sides, inside, outside. Yeah, exactly. And of course, the thing with these projects as well is, is you can always build on them as well. So you might say, I'm going to start with a small, you know, rose, for example, there's some beautiful rose appliques. Mm. And then, you know, time marches on and you think, I want to add a little bit to that and I'm going to stick with the botanical theme and so why they're going to do maybe a whole bunch of different roses or you want to add in um, something like a dragonfly or, yeah. or a bird or something. So you you always have the option to, to do more. And, of course, depending on your placement of it as well, um, and if you haven't ironed it on, you can always take it off as yeah. well. Yeah. Look, and I find too that some of them have iron-ons and I've never managed to get them to stick properly, which is why I always sew around them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I do too. Even if they, you know, if you follow the instructions to the letter of the, the law, sometimes you don't have to do all the way around them. You just want to do maybe just the fringes of them. So if I'm doing a leopard around the tail, the feet, the ears, the nose kind of thing, yeah. I, I end up doing the whole thing. But you don't have to the yeah. whole thing but yes yeah, i agree well there you go we hope you have been inspired to have a little project for yourself think about especially if you've got things you're going to get rid of um and it yeah. could be because they don't fit well anymore that you could go oh i've got some jeans and things that they don't don't fit well but maybe i could use parts of them in some sort of project like this yeah, yeah. and i would say you do want to think about the end project um and how enjoyable it's going to be but a really crucial part is, is the doing. But it, it should be something that has that playful, light feeling to it. To me, it should be a joyful um, kind of, of project. So, you know, you might want to think about, um, you know, if you're a grandmother, for example, you could do a project for um, a child, one of your grandchildren to start with. Um, that's also on a, a smaller scale, might be a little bit easier, but you want to make the process fun as well. Yes, and, you know, use it to bespoke your clothes and take them away so when somebody says where do you get that you go you can't buy this because you know like this has been specially you know specially customized yes 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 exactly that's fun too i find you know i like having conversations with complete strangers about uh style and fashion and what i'm wearing some people don't but i do and certainly um well actually that the creative skirt the six pairs yeah. um i was out in a, a a reasonably remote part where renee who took all the photos she has her uh jewelry studio we, we had to pick up lunch it really is a whistle stop town there's one store in town this guy gets off a motorbike and he comes in he's ordering a burger and he looks me up and he says where did you get that skirt it's awesome <laughs> it's like Okay, first time that I've had a motorcyclist with big chuggy boots and a leather jacket. Yeah. No, he had the, the full spade beard. Yeah. Tell me that he liked what I was wearing. This is the first. Yeah. So you just never know who you'll start a conversation with. That's right. <laughs> well, thanks, Jill. That was really great. And hopefully everybody can get a little bit inspired just to think outside the square a little bit and think about how they can customise something for themselves.